Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to the show where we are kicking off Willow Week. I guess it is, I guess is what we're going to call it. It's going to be Wednesday by the time you guys see this video because I got really behind on some other stuff. So Willow Week, I guess is going to go from Wednesday to, to Wednesday. So congratulations on being Willow Wednesday or Wednesday Willow, something like that. Anyway. Yeah, so if you guys don't know who, uh, his name's now Femboy Willow, but if you guys don't know who Willow's duality is, uh, go. I'll link his channel down in the description down below. He, uh, much better caster than me, he uh, works way harder at his videos than I do. <laughs> so anyway, if you if you for some reason you haven't heard of him, go check him out. But anyway, let's go ahead and introduce our players. we got a 4v4 uh, matchmaking game here. It's going down on Plateau of Arrakis, which I actually didn't know this one was in the ladder pool either. But I love this map. I'm a huge fan of this map. So team one up at the top, team two down at the bottom. Let's start with our westernmost player. We've got Nice Try who's going Cybran, and he's opening first land. Next, we have got Buck and Chuck, who definitely wins the award for my favorite name of all time, uh, until I find another favorite name of all time. But he's going Seraphim opening first land. So Buck and Chuck, uh, you have the award until I now until I give it to somebody else. And next, we've got Lucid, who is going UEF opening first land in the air position. He's got his air factory all queued up. How very appropriate. And last but not least, we have Zeter. Or Zetter, Zetir, we're going with Zeter, who's going Seraphim opening first land. And let's shift to team number two. In the most eastern position, we got Scoob, long-term supporter of the channel, good friend of mine, actually. Uh, he's going UEF opening first land. Next, we've got the man himself, Femboy Willow, or Willow's Duality, because I can't stomach saying Femboy too many times. It just, like, leaves a, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I don't know. I don't know. I don't get myself. You guys don't get me either. But he's going Aeon. How very disgusting of him. And he's going first land. And next we got Thurnus Halley, who's or Thurnus Haley, I believe is how you pronounce his name. And he's going Cybern opening first land, second air in that air position. He uh, obviously much much more much. He's much more smarter, and uh, that's obviously reflected in the rating with him being at about 800, 1800, and Willow being at about thirteen hundred. Willow, if you just quit playing Aeon. Next, we've got Karina, 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 who's going UEF opening first lane, going land all day. Okay, so while we got the comms moving to the middle, uh, Willow is moving out for some of this lovely reclaim that's here in the middle. Uh, we can throw that up on the screen. We got a couple wrecks here. Um, in the custom games version, there's actually a couple bouncer wrecks, I think, but it looks like they... Uh, Looks like they took that out in the ladder matchmaking pool. So really just a lot of rocks here in the middle. Uh, Scoob is going to be expanding on to the east as well as Nice Try going to the west, his mirror. Um, and then the other commanders are going to go and grab their respective plateaus. So while everybody is getting started, um, yeah, I had a very, very uh, funny comment uh, pop up on my channel uh, literally today. It was from No Way Jose. And uh, he was like, oh, so are you done casting? And uh, to that, I have to say, no way, Jose. Um, I'm not done casting. I've just been very busy with uh, some family stuff. I started a new job. Uh, this is the first time all of my siblings have been in the same city for like two years, or two years, three years, something like that. So uh, I've been getting to see my siblings hang out with some family. And, uh, you know, I, lo I love Faf and I love YouTube and I love casting. But, you know, that takes priority. And... Uh, yeah, if y'all are ever finding yourself in a situation where you're feeling like Faf's getting in the way of family, you should heavily reevaluate your life choices. Well, that's it from me on my soapbox. We got Thurnus who's moving out to grab some reclaim on the neutral buildings. Uh, Willow going for forward land factory, probably a reclaim factory. And we're going to be focusing a little bit on Willow here. I'm going to zoom out and take a look at the rest of the map here, but... Uh, I want to take my buddy's game apart here, much like he took himself apart on New Year's Eve. If you guys tuned into that stream, that was quite a special stream. I think Willow got blasted off of like four shots or something like that. But anyway, got a Mexico one up to Tech 2. Uh, he's built, uh, in my opinion, too many land factories. Um, five land factories and then a sixth one out here. Uh, that, that is quite a bit of Tech 1 land spam. Um, and he's going for mechs upgrade, so... I mean, in my opinion, hold off on these factories or at least put them on pause until you can get this until you can get this max up. He is assisting it at least, so that'll help out a little bit. 
But all of these factories sucking down three to four mass, uh, depending on what he's got coming out, looks like pretty much all uh, Aurora and artillery at this point. Oh, and incidentally, it looks like the fervor uh, only costs... No, now it's costing four mass, unless that's a thistle. I'm not really familiar with the uh, Aeon models so much. I actually have to read. I'm constantly queuing up spirits. If I'm unlucky enough to get a Aeon in a custom game, I'm pretty much constantly queuing up spirits instead of Aurora, and I have to go and double check that every single time. Um, but Willow covering Scoob's flank here. Scoob focused on getting out to the east. Um, Willow holding this middle position, and then Scoob's going to be taking it from there. It looks like uh, Willow, Scoob, and Thernis uh, probably were on comms for this game. Uh, so, you know, take take from that what you will. Being on comms doesn't help me at all. It, <laughs> there's only there's only so much you can do to help my play in a game. Uh, but usually these three guys, uh, from my experience, they're going to be on comms. I don't know if Karna um, is, is part of their stack or not, but yeah, they're going to be... They're going to be knocking that down. Uh, Scoob's got a pretty good tech one land presence. Willow has quite a bit more tech one than his opponent. His opponent going for uh, much more forward manufacturing. Uh, two factories in the base um, and then getting an additional four out front. I just, I, I don't think that this amount of tech one spam is really necessary on this map. Like it's, it's a, it's a pretty big map unless you're unless you're pushing really really aggressively like willow is right now he's actually got his commander on patrol so uh he's probably floating mass a little bit here yeah i think he t tipped over that 80 percent mark um i know i had a, got a lot of new people that watch this game um, but if you've got uh engineers on either attack move or uh on patrol which will do the auto reclaim if your mass bar gets above 80 percent uh they will stop uh, auto reclaiming and they will actually go and assist whatever it is uh, nearest to them the only way you can mitigate that is by doing what willow has done here um, and he's actually got an attack move rally point out of his factory i've got a whole video detailing um, kind of how to execute these various reclaim strategies um, and i will try and remember to link that down in the description below along with willow's channel and if i say it enough times i will remember in fact to do it I've gotten some angry comments and people saying that I forget to link stuff and I know I forget to link stuff which is why you're supposed to remind me in the comments after the video is posted in 24 to 48 hours instead of now so yeah it's all y'all's fault it's definitely not my fault for forgetting it's y'all's fault for reminding me and not the way that I want to be reminded in <laughs> oh boy this is gonna be a good one. Okay, so still going for like just a ton of tech one, and he's got uh, he's got tech two on the way. I don't think you need this many tanks, um, especially if they're sitting here doing nothing. Like if you want to go and roll your opponent, that's fine. Um, but on this map, like it's like it, it's really easy to get encircled. Although if you're coordinating with Scoob, you could probably crush this base. Uh, his comm is up here on a gun speed and range upgrade, so this door is pretty wide open for you right now. Um, you don't want to go and attack the commander here because he's got the point defense right next to him, which is an, a, an interesting spot to put a point defense, but we're not talking about Buck and Chuck here uh, outside of uh, admiring his amazing name. Uh, we're talking about uh, Willow here. Willow actually does go for a push. His commander was forward. Now it's back. He's just going with uh, Tech 1 land. Um, Aurora, he's going to lose a couple of Aurora to Zui, but not, not a ton. It's a pretty good trade, all things considered. Um, and he should have radar in this mix. He's got a couple of scouts there. That's good. Um, he's got to move his fervors, though, to deal with the point defense. Uh, Buck and Chuck actually canceling his gun upgrade. Um, and is now, now moving forward to take on Willow's land army. Willow, though, back here on a sensor upgrade. That leaves his army very vulnerable to this commander. Um, and yeah, this comm's gonna take some damage. There's a lot of Aurora here, but like, just look at these overcharges, man. That's five Auroras down. Need to have your commander if you're gonna be pushing in with Tech 1 land like this. Um, his Tech 1 land is now coming in as well to mop up your stragglers, and now you're forced to retreat, and you have left a grand total of a lot of reclaim there. 
I need to go and check and see if advanced reclaim info is working again or figure out a way to make it work. So, yeah, not a great push. You know, your commander was forward first without your tanks, and then your tanks are forward without your commander. Uh, your commander is now getting tech two. Okay. Uh, at least you've stopped making tech one now, which is good. I guess you had decided you had donated enough reclaim. In case anybody is telling me that I'm being too harsh on Willow right now, he actually asked me to be like really harsh on him. So, ah. Everybody knows I love Willow. All right, tech two uh, up against gun speed and range. So Willow looking to fire base here. I, um, 10 minutes, I don't know. I don't think tech two is a great choice there. Um, although I don't know what else you would go for there. I, I think what just what I just probably wouldn't upgrade my commander at this point. Uh, just probably walk it back and focus on some blazes, which you're getting out now, as well as some asylums, um, some ascendants. So getting out some. Uh, just if you're not if you're not hip with the unit names, we got Blaze, which is the Tech Two assault tank. It's kind of a lighter assault tank uh, than the Obsidian. And then you've got mobile shield generators as well as it looks like mobile flak is coming out, which means he watched my video on mobile flak. Follow up coming soon, by the way. Just need to assemble the footage at this point, I think, and record my voiceover. But yeah, see, now your tech one is like essentially cannon fodder. Like this one Ilshiva will, and this T1 army is going to force you to retreat. You're going to deposit more reclaim here. And you invested so much in Aurora. And uh, you killed a point defense and a mex. It's a, it's a rough life. I don't know. I don't even think Aeon Tech 1 is really even worth it unless... Unless you're playing ladder. I just try and skip it <laughs> entirely. Just like I'm not fucking dealing with this shit. Aurora, uh-uh, no thank you. Uh, Strat actually out from Lucid, moving in on Thernus here. So we'll talk about some other portions of the map. Thernus actually already got a Myrmidon up, which is great, but he is gonna lose some of his power. Uh, does still have one Tech 2 power generator up, which is really gonna help, and uh, Tech 3 P-Gen up at about two thirds, so that's good. I don't think that Strat died, right? Right? Oh, well, it is now. It's dead now. It <laughs> he landed it. Lucy, Lucy. Lucy, Lucy. 1600 lands a strat in an enemy base. I'm so glad I caught that. You know? That's one of those things that if I was Lucy, I'd be like, for God's sake, please don't cast this game, and for God's sake, please do not see that I landed a strat in the enemy base, but we got it, buddy. Don't worry. It's all on camera. It's going up on the internet. Never to be forgotten ever again. Willow getting some point defense up. Tech 2 PD. He's got some blazes up here and some obsidians as well. So that's good. Obsidian's going to hit quite a bit harder than the blazes. Also be able to take quite a bit more punishment. Um, obsidians outside of range do trade really, really well with Ilshivas. So the Aeon kind of moves from having like the most paper thin unit at tech one to actually having like one of the beefier units at tech two. See, tanking that overcharge, just taking down the shield. Uh, that overcharge would have, would have knocked out a worser. Would have, uh, would have. Moving on, <laughs> we've got more oblivions being spammed up here. I just, I don't think you really need this. You don't really need oblivions here. Like you're not you're not really defending against anything. What does he what does he see? Uh at this point. Okay, I mean he sees like kind of the army. Um and he's got sensors on his comm. Whose tech two radar was that? Was that his? Alright, you're getting TMD. That's really good. Like the tech two radar. Yeah, that, that's even his tech two radar, so. Like, he, he should have the presence of mind here to know that, you know, that there's nothing over here that is going to threaten your army of uh, obsidians and blazes, as well as your commander. Uh, but going into 
oblivions as well as even some shield generators here. This is just a lot of mass invested. I'd be really surprised if these things uh, make a huge difference. Might be able to pay for themselves eventually, but you know, while you're investing all this mass here, like Scoob is in a position to be pushed back here. We've got nice try being very aggressive here. I'm not quite sure what Karina is doing. Uh, Karina has gone for a really, really fast Tech 3 upgrade, actually. Okay, so he's gone Tech 3 at 14 minutes. That's really good. As long as he doesn't give up too much ground, should be able to make it back. Now your Tech 2 units are uh, going to be able to really mop this up. Uh, Rhino's really, really good. Obsidians are better, though. Um, as long as they don't get overcharged by the comm. And, oh my god, the pathing is just absolutely murdering you here. So this engage is kind of rough, like, around a cliff face like this, because your units are going to want to stack up. Because the way FAF calculates pathing is it... it it calculates the shortest path to the destination while trying to stay in formation as much as possible. At least that's, that's usually what I've seen. So this means that all of your units are going to stack up and really have a problems pathing over each other. Um, which means that that engagement probably could have been better if you had just clicked down here instead of around this cliff face. But either way, you did what you wanted to do. Um, and you've got nice try on the run here. Nice try actually in quite a bit of trouble here, I think. Once these obsidians get into range, you can see how much damage these things do. They're quite good. I think in my uh, Tech 2 main battle unit video, I think I ranked these the best Tech 2 main battle unit. Oh, and Corsair is over from Thurnus. That is a that is a dead calm if I've ever seen one. So, nice try. Oh, he vets. Nice try, vets. All right, maybe the Oblivions were necessary there, but either way, it's forced you to fall back now because you're focused on something else. Was that another vet? Did he get another vet? Five vet comm, 95 kills. Damn, this dude got value out of his commander. Unfortunately, I don't think he's going to be able to get out of this. Yep, and he goes down. Okay, so Firebase here, and uh, we actually didn't talk about this earlier, um, but he was building uh, Tech 2 P-Gens up here. And uh, that's just terrible. I don't know why people build Tech 2 P-Gens in, in their forward fire bases. I, it's just not good. Like, you've, you've got plenty of manufacturing back here. Just build it in your base, man. It's safer. It's not going to get rolled over whenever fucking Chuck decides to breathe on it with his massive comm. That is a massive comm. Restoration field, nano, and gun. No wonder those... Those Oblivions just kind of fell over and died. But Titans now out from Karna. Karna? Karna. Yep, that's what we said. All right, Willow moving in with his uh, essentially vanilla comm here. The, wow, lots of, quite a few. Um, why am I blanking on the name of the fighter bomb right now? What the fuck? Corsair, thank you, God. Uh, he does have flak in the mix, but I think it's a little bit too little. That with the obsidians, gonna be Buck and Chuck's downfall. That is uh, two players going out relatively quickly there for uh, team one. It's not looking great. Not great, not terrible, you know. Like our. Uh, the uh, head nuclear engineer in Chernobyl is supposedly supposedly said. I'm pulling that from the dramatized version. If you guys haven't seen and you want like a, I don't know, a really good dramatic retelling of that incident, um, you should go check that out. I think it was on HBO. They do not pull any punches as HBO never does. <laughs> but nano repair now coming out for Zeter who has uh, pretty much pushed Scoob off of this plateau, which is good. What is Willow up to now? Willow making the jump to Tech 3 at 18 minutes. Not too bad. Uh, it would have been a lot cooler if you had jumped to Tech 3 a little bit sooner instead of building um, 
the uh, firebase made out of playing cards up there, but you know. And now you're building an you building a firebase back here now? Come on. And with a tech two with a forward tech two power ge generator. Why? why? This is gonna save you 25 to 50 energy on this on this shield generator. The the adjacency is not worth that. I'm I'm lo I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. Like, how much is a tech two PJ? I can't remember off the top of my head. What is this? 1200, 1200 mass. 12, 1200 mass is getting is getting put here. And now you're going for tech three on your commander. Okay, probably to build a bigger firebase. That's fine. Because uh, if you if you build a mousetrap, you might as well build a, a better mousetrap. Um, no matter how bad your first mousetrap was. I mean, I guess we can all ask, we can all ask 343 Industries how that one is going. But yeah, I mean, look at this, look at this, look at this. It went from 150 to 131. And you put a PGen in in a in a spot it doesn't need to go in. You would save more energy putting it next to your factory. Maybe I don't know. What is this making a blaze? Where's another one making a blaze that doesn't have adjacency? 48, 42. Okay, you wouldn't save more by putting it next to your factory. Never mind. But still, you should not put it. Should not put it in your firebase. I don't get it. I don't get it. Nice push though. You know. With the blazes. But I'm such a terrible human being. I just spent the last three minutes like roasting him for his forward power generator production. And I'm like, yeah, nice push, by the way. Although it actually kind of hasn't really worked out for you. You had a lot of mantis. And uh, blazes, while they are pretty quick and they do hover, they don't have a whole lot of health. Uh, they actually have less health than pillars. Memory serves. Is there a pillar here? Yeah, they do. They have 400 less health than pillars. So they're good, like, they're good mobile units, and they're pretty cheap and good to make in a pinch, but, like, these are really your big baddies right here. I'm pretty sure these things are one-shotting Mantis, yeah. And they've, they've literally got, they've nearly got three times the health between their shield and uh, their hull, which their shield recharges at a really, really fast rate, too. So you get, like, free health without veterancy. Um, but please don't walk these into the point defense. Please don't walk them into... The, oh my god, he's walking them into the point defense. And it's only tech 1 PD, so it's not... It's not the end of the world, but you're going to lose unnecessary obsidians here. And maybe it doesn't really matter. Okay, you lost 4. You lost five. Okay. All right. Maybe. Eh, okay. One's still alive. One's still alive. Uh, to be able to mess with the Tech 3 mechs. Um, it looks like Orange was pushing Scoob and is uh, starting to have. Man, both Seraphim commanders just went for like maximum dig size this game with uh, Gun, Mano, and Restoration Field. And both are going to die to Corsairs. <laughs> Call karma. Actually, Thernus getting outmaneuvered here in the air. Uh, not a bad air fight. Okay, back to Willow. Uh, Tech 3 P Gen. You don't need a Tech 3 P Gen right now. Uh, maybe I'm wrong? I don't know. I feel like the only reason you're stalling power right now is because you're building the Tech 3 P Gen. Like, you've got two Tech 2 power generators. Have you got all your mechs to Tech 3 yet? One, uh, okay. All right, all right. Well, sort of. You got some of these, got a couple of these out here just upgrading, um, idle upgrade, unassisted upgrade, whatever you want to call it. I would, I would probably focus on getting this guy to Tech 3 and then this guy to Tech 3 before going for a Tech 3 P gen because like, at the end of the day, how much do carbs actually take in terms of power? I don't play Aeon a whole lot, as I'm sure you guys can tell. But, I mean, you also got the, you also got the Obsidians. 
The other Seraphim commander is going to die to Corsairs. He obviously didn't learn his lesson from Buck and Chuck. So, Zeter is, uh... <laughs> Zeter didn't learn by watching uh, his opponent. Uh, Karina is kind of out to lunch here. Or out to sea, rather. Maybe not out to lunch, but he's got a couple of bricks bearing down on him. He does have Tech 2 and Gun, so he should be okay. Um... And now you're assisting this one whenever it's 15% of the way done. This one is being unassisted at 50%. Are you... Do you have... Matt, you're... Okay, you actually just got a really, really big influx from, from Daddy Thernus. Um, apparently, Daddy Thernus loves to be called Daddy. So, I'm acquiescing there. Um, but why would you not just prioritize the one that is not only safer and closer to your base instead of... Instead of assisting one that's out here and starting it. Like, you, you probably didn't even need that donation from Thernus. And uh, if you didn't have, if Thernus didn't need to give you that donation, he might have had an SMD up already. Because <laughs> uh, there is a nuke incoming. Um, and that SMD is, in fact, not loaded, and there is no other SMD in sight. Thernus is canceling laser. Okay, so he's moving. Uh, but that SMD. Uh, not going to get loaded in time. It was close ish. But, yep, not going to get loaded in, loaded in time. Thernus is going to lose a lot of his air grid, uh, as well as a lot of his mass. He had uh, a bunch of those double-capped as well with uh, Tech 2 mass fabs. So, that's going to sting a little bit. Uh, Scoob's got an obese child, uh, which is good. Um, and I'm talking about in the game. I'm not talking about in real life. Uh, another Tech 3 P gen, another fat boy coming up. All right, so now Scoob has gotten uh, an SMD, and um, I noticed that he built it about as far away as possible from Willow's base <laughs> while still covering his own. <laughs> what a nice guy. And then we have another SMD over here that is about as far away from Willow's base as it could possibly be and still covering Karina's, Karina's base. So nobody wants to protect... <laughs> Nobody wants to share their SMDs with Willow, apparently. Both Scoob and Karina have apparently gone out of their way uh, to build their SMDs in so far away from, from Willow's base. Does that actually not protect Willow's base? Uh, I mean, it protects it a little bit. Scoob's <laughs> protects it a little bit as well. That's so funny. Okay. All right, so Willow now got to push uh, with some Harbs as well as some Obsidians. Uh, he has Flak in the mix as well. Bravo, good sir. That's going to help him out a lot with these Tech 1 Bombers that uh, Lucid, who is now the only player left on Team 1, uh, is spamming out. Which is good to see. Lucid going for uh, a Tech 1 offensive down the middle. I guess the Oblivion's... Uh, Gonna sort of pay for themselves here. I like how you built the Sam out in front of the Oblivions. I mean, these Flak did amazing job. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. 31 kills, 5 ranks of veterancy. The other one's got 24 kills and 5 ranks of veterancy. Flak just absolutely shredding. The Tech 1 Bombers. I love it when my science works out. I have no idea if that would have been uh, the same if it was uh, Tech 3. I'm going to guess no. But to people writing the hate in the comments, I'm not 100% I'm not sure. That would have worked out the same way. Because, unfortunately, testing is isolated, but the games are real life. I do my best to make my tests translate as much to real life as possible, but sometimes it doesn't work out. That's actually one of the big problems I've had with mobile AA. I was trying to get them to actually translate to real life. Are you power stalling? How the hell are you power stalling? You're not power stalling. Huh. I wonder why shields blinked off. Maybe it was just health. But either way, this army, I don't think is going to win against this army. Uh, especially if they don't do anything. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. 
Although if both of these armies just kind of have a little standoff here, like the Battle of Troy, I guess it's all right, never mind. Willow is moving to attack. His soldiers following without question, because he is the best. No one can stop him. So there's another nuke. I was going after Thurnus. <laughs> and Karen's base, I guess. Alright, so that's two nukes out of Lucid. It is 177 kills for that nuke launcher. Nearly 100,000 mass killed. That is, uh, that is pretty good. It's pretty good value out of that. Scoob has, uh, now has a sibling for his, uh, for his fat boy. He's got another fat boy out. Willow now has a Tech 2 land factory on the front line. I'm not, I'm not sure why. Maybe he needed to spend mass. Uh, all of these are now Tech 3 producing Harbs. That's good. 28 minutes into the game with a mass income of 165. And he's getting a lot of dumps from Daddy Thurnus. So at this point, probably should go for another Tech 3 P gen. And then uh, uh, Galactic Colossus. Probably. I don't think y'all have air. Yeah, because Thurnus is... Uh, Thurnus's entire base is turned into uh, Chernobyl over there. So uh, no air control for them. So no Czar, but probably should go for a GC at this point. Although, I don't know. It's pretty risky to go for any experimental at this point just because with no air control and this number of Tech 1 bombers. Uh, like, Tech 1 bomber is actually pretty good in mass at dealing with experimentals. They're cheap, they're quick, they're easy to manufacture. It's an unfortunate shift G on those Mantis. Because they get sat on by some fat children. As well as some Titans. Uh, actually, Thurnus still does have a little bit of an air presence here, but... Uh, does his best to actually is gonna probably save the fat boy here uh, a lot of bombs dropped there actually didn't even make it through the shield well done sir he's gonna save the fat boy the younger sibling maybe oh yeah he's got it right surely there's not another wave that is currently being marshaled Thurnus has one lonely ASF yet left uh, he is an ace, though. He does have five kills uh, before he gets viciously shot down. Uh, Scoob pushing forward with his fat boy. The fat boy has lost its shield. It's starting to lose some weight, which means it can't take as many punches. And uh, uh, that means it's going to get beaten down by uh, another fat boy out from Lucid. Uh, tech 2 mass. Max still there. Uh, so still got some tech... Tech 2 Mex is bumping around. Um, he has built his own SMD because his allies just decided to royally screw him over and build SMDs about as far away from his base as they could realistically hope to accomplish. That's probably why he's power stalling. Or he was power stalling at least. I think he's living off of overflow right now because he got 2,500. He's only making 4,500 mass or uh, energy. He's definitely getting some overflow there from, from Daddy Thurnus. Ooh, strat. Takes out some build power. That's about it. Karna would like the world to know that he has 44 titans. So yeah, got to finish upgrading mexes. I think at 30 minutes on this map, realistically, I think all of your mexes should be tech 3 uh, if you're playing well. Nice hard push, though. Unfortunately, there's no flak to go with it. So, that does mean that these bombers, while it will be something of a trail of tears here, and I think these harps will be able to do some damage, uh, it unfortunately will mean that these harps probably not going to do as much as they could have uh, if they had some anti-air support. Um, especially considering Thurnus has now been nuked twice and... Uh, isn't really producing ASF anymore. 
Uh, we got five, six, seven. Still making their way into the base. Locking on to the Tech 3 Maxes. Good. Uh, there's not really any power around here. Usually, uh, if you're pushing, um, I would recommend focusing on power over mass, which can, which can seem weird. Um, but if you take out power, you can damage so much more than if you take out mass. If you take out mass, you really just take out their ability to build more stuff. If you take out power, you're taking out radar, you're taking out shields, uh, you're taking out the mass extractor's ability to produce mass. Uh, so you want to go for power usually if you have a choice, but in this instance, Willow doesn't really have a choice. He's just kind of got to go for the mexes because uh, those are the most high value targets there. Um, and he's going to get four of them, four tech three mexes. Not a bad raid, especially considering a lot of this reclaim, I think, is going to get destroyed by these bombers. Yeah, so you can see uh, you can see the reclaim actually going down on this guy. So 508 versus uh, 3600 over here. So, the bomber's also inhibiting Lucid's ability to recover, which is also good. Um, this game is honestly in a pretty good spot for team number two, though. It, despite the lack of air control, um, I just don't think Lucid has enough gas on the ground right now. Well, I mean, he's got a lot of siege tanks. Got a lot of siege tanks. He's got a huge army up here. Um, but a lot of it is tech one. He's just got like a shitload of mantis with a few bricks. This is literally like the Persian army here. You've got your immortals and then uh, everybody else. He has a Novax. Hello. All right. Willow needs some shields. Willow's getting some shields. Um, I don't quite understand though why no experimental. Why a portal instead of an experimental? Have you actually even upgraded all of your mexes yet? Why a portal when you have tech two mexes? Like this is this is really easy to check. If you guys want to check, he probably just me messed up here. But if you guys want to check if all of your mexes are tech three, uh, because on some maps you can forget one, just go to one you know is tech three. If you double click it. You can see the ones that you haven't upgraded yet. So we've got this one that is not upgraded and this one that is, uh, if I can select it, upgrading at 66%. Unassisted, by the way. Not not assisting the upgrade, but he is assisting a Rascom. Uh, the Rascom is going to produce uh, 11 mass income, okay, for 6,400 mass. Now let's schmoozy on over here to a Tech 3 Mex which will produce 18 and actually more like, what is it, 26, 24, 27 mass per tick at the whopping price tag of 4,600 mass. So you're spending 50% less mass for almost triple the mass income. You probably forgot though. But that's a really easy way to check. Just zoom out, double click a tech three max, and then you can be like, oh, this guy's not upgrading. Or, uh, it's not upgraded yet. And then upgrade it. Alright. Harby army from Arby's. Nice little, uh, delicious stack of roast beef sandwiches there with some horsey sauce making their way up. I actually really don't like Arby's. I got sick last time I ate there, which was like eight or nine years ago. Probably never going back. Their horseradish sauce though, it does taste good. But you gotta question how many animals have made their home in their horseradish sauce. I think at this point. I don't think that this uh, push is necessarily a good idea um, because you've got this big army here. Do you know that that's there? Yeah, you know that that's there. Okay, now you're reacting. So now you're pulling your army back. All right, that's good. And even though this looks like a way bigger army, these Harbs probably would trade pretty well. Strat's coming in, actually. I'm uh, gonna bag a couple of Harbingers. And actually, we got some Southernus back here. Some artillery. Uh, Thurnus has rebolstered his Air Force, uh, but he isn't microing them. Although, on the bright side, Lucy isn't microing his either. There we go. Now Thurnus is paying attention. 
All right, Lucy coming in. Lucy should win this. Although Thern is, or, uh, Lucy is fighting over the top of Sam's and Flack. Oh, and he tries to bug out. And Thernis actually wins that pretty convincingly. All right. Uh, Harb is uh, on the move again. And Lucy going to make the push. Uh, Willow needs to see that and react to it. See it? React to it. See it? React to it. There you go. He saw it. He reacted to it. Hopefully, he isn't going to have another really big pathfinding issue. And hopefully, for the love of God, he picks up the thousands of reclaim that are just sitting in his fire bases. Like, you got it. You've got a factory right here. All right, Oblivion turrets are doing something. Harbs doing something else. The main army of Harbs are making their way up here. This little band probably going to get beaten down by the bricks. It's not a pleasant way to go. If you've ever been beaten down by a brick, it's not a whole lot of fun. I don't know, but I can't imagine it would be a whole lot of fun. Brakes aren't very soft. Oh, we got Titans down here from Scoob. Titans from Karen. Or Karen. Yeah, that push is done. That push is, that push is very done. These poor guys never stood a chance. Marched them straight into the hot gates. Uh, Willow actually had another little push going on up here. Uh, looked like he had uh, seven or eight Harbs. Uh, ran into a lot of Othams, though. Scoob actually getting pushed here. Oh, it's going to be Lucy going for Control K. All right, kind of a little bit of an anticlimactic ending, but I uh, wanted to focus on Willow's playstyle. So, let's talk about it. Uh, first thing first, I don't know why people do this. I wish people would stop. I don't get it. Uh, the Tech 2P gen forward in a firebase, I don't get it. Uh, next, literally just zoom out. Uh, double click on your Tech 3 mexes. Uh, if you see one that's not Tech 3, uh, go ahead and upgrade it before spending just a redonkulous amount of cash on uh, RAS commanders. Uh, next thing, probably would have gone for an experimental. At the, like, it's 38 minutes. I mean, experimental, like, just in the, in the, in the, in the prioritization here of where your mass is spent. Like, I cannot believe that quantum gateway is what popped into your head. Uh, like, experimentals, tech three mexes, uh, you could have even gone air. Like, uh, going air and helping out Thernus, who lost his base. Like, that would have been good. Uh, so, I think a lot of, a lot of different things. Uh, I just, I, I really have a problem with quantum gateways. I also, just, I also just don't really like... I'm not a huge fan of Rascoms, okay? I built them very recently, actually. I'm just not a... I feel like it's just... it's At 38 minutes, there, there's better ways to use your mass. There's better ways to get more mass, too. So, anyway. All right. That's first video to kick off Willow Week here. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, check out the description for my video that I promised I would link down in the description before... I don't have to go back and I'm gonna have to go back and watch the video to remember what I said I was gonna link down in the description. I hate it whenever I do this. Um, as well as uh, Willow's channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.